I'm Mike Kloppermann and I will present our paper on data first visualization design studies. This is joint work together with Tamara Mansner. Most people in this session are probably highly familiar with design studies, so I will only provide a brief definition. Quoting the design study methodology paper, a design study is a project in which visualization researchers analyze a specific real world problem faced by domain experts design a visualization system that supports solving this problem, validate the design, and reflect about lessons learned in order to refine visualization design guidelines. The Design Study Methodology, or DSM for short, provides guidance for this type of applied visualization research, including a nine-stage framework, which has been used frequently over the last few years. The DSM suggests to connect with domain experts at an early winner stage, to understand their problems and to find out if there is a relevant research question. This winnowing process can take some time. A careful selection is necessary because not all potential collaborations are a good match. We now characterize this approach as a stakeholder first ordering. But we argue that this framework falls short of capturing the nature of data first design studies that are primarily initiated by acquiring an interesting real world data set rather than selecting a specific stakeholder at the beginning. In the data-first design study, the selection of the initial data constrains appropriate choices for stakeholders. The VIS researcher contacts multiple potential stakeholders, presents the data opportunities, and conducts a problem characterization. Focus stakeholders are then carefully chosen based on the match between data and tasks. This data-first process hasn't been explicitly analyzed in the VIS literature, but we realized that they occur frequently, for example in class or site projects, visualization design competitions, or in research contexts. The motivation behind this approach stems from our own experience in conducting data-first design studies. In our Belief Workshop paper, we contribute a refined and extended framework for data-first design studies to provide guidance and to highlight the differences to the original DSM. We reviewed 64 publications to find out if other projects indicated data-first ordering explicitly or implicitly as well. And we discuss a range of opportunities and risks of this special type of design study. We also reflect on two previously published studies that guided our initial thinking. I will compare our data-first framework to the original nine-stage DSM framework. The learn stage remains unchanged. It is about the visualization knowledge in general and independent of the specific domain problem. A major change is to add an early acquire stage at the beginning. A visualizer encounters, collects, generates or obtains access to a dataset and begins to develop a data abstraction. Data sketches can provide first insights. What type of data am I working with? Are there any data quality challenges? What is special about this data? And most important, who would benefit of seeing and exploring it? We move the discover stage immediately after and rename it to elicit to emphasize its focus on tasks. The visualizer reaches out to multiple potential stakeholders, explains the initial data abstractions and learns about unsolved stakeholder needs. The goal of the winner stage is to assess and prioritize potential stakeholders. How frequent are their data relevant tasks? How central are these tasks to the stakeholder's primary mission? And how many people in the organization deal with these tasks? Some nuances differ in the cast stage, where the goal is to identify collaborator roles. Here, it's important to distinguish between data producers and data consumers. The design stage is narrowed to cover only visual idioms and interactions. The data abstraction takes place early in the acquire stage. The subsequent stages, implement, deploy, reflect and write, remain mostly unchanged, with some small adjustments, for example to reflect and report on the peculiarities of this data-first process. Here you can see a direct comparison. Similar to the original framework, the data-first stages emphasize iteration. Additional data sources may be incorporated and data and task abstractions are refined continuously. We had our own direct experience with projects that started with specific datasets, but we were also interested if these data-first approaches have been explicitly or implicitly described in the literature. 
In total, we reviewed 64 Design Study publications from the last two decades, and we identified 16 potential cases that indicate characteristics of a data-first design process. We searched for any statements that suggest that a design study began with data and doesn't exhibit a very clear stakeholder-first ordering, for example in the motivation and process sections of a paper. An accurate allocation to a stakeholder-first or data-first ordering is not always possible in this type of retrospective analysis. These decisions are our own qualitative judgment calls and are based on limited information from the publications. It was particularly difficult to know when stakeholder engagement began and who provided the data. And often it was difficult to disambiguate between a researcher being their own stakeholder versus a data-first process. Researchers with extensive domain expertise may be qualified to self-validate a visualization solution, but our suggested data-first process largely focuses on external domain experts. Nevertheless, we identified 16 potential cases, suggesting that data-first approaches are more common than may be explicitly reported. Many authors use the design study methodology as a guide to describe their process, and we hope this paper encourages authors to be more upfront and center about the various flavors of design studies. Based on our own experience and the review of published projects, I want to now briefly discuss opportunities and risks of our proposed data-first approach. Data-first design studies can be an alternative avenue to approach with research collaborations and allow possibilities that don't fit in the traditional DSM process. We can roughly compare to market pull versus technology push dynamics in product innovation. The originally acquired data is used to push ideas from an outside perspective instead of pulling analysis questions from a domain expert. Starting a design study without real data is a common pitfall, so access to real-world datasets is a major advantage and allows the creation of data sketches and technology probes early on. Addressing the needs of multiple stakeholders might lead to conflicting tasks and an ever-expanding project scope. In a data-first design study, the primary data source serves as a guide to delimit the problem space and to select matching stakeholders. Besides these opportunities, a data-first process may introduce risks and tensions. For example, a delayed involvement of domain experts and hypothesized instead of verified tasks. Or to converge on a specific idea too early and to develop a full-fledged prototype without much stakeholder engagement. When you have data at your fingertips, it is tempting to implement something right away. But technology probes should be limited in functionality and open-ended to avoid wasted effort. Stakeholders shouldn't become just design verifiers. In the worst case, the search for potential stakeholders may not succeed, and a successful design study wouldn't be achievable. In this case, other types of contributions, such as a novel visualization technique or algorithm, may be possible. A less extreme situation is when there is only a small number of potential users, and significant time is spent on promotion instead of on the actual research questions. A clear match between data and stakeholder tasks is often not immediately obvious, especially when a proxy measure stands in for a variable of interest. A misinterpretation can lead to project detours or to a failed design study. When users see their own data or data similar to theirs, they are often enthusiastic and conjecture about the many different ways the data might be useful. A central concern is to understand whether the visualization addresses a core task, an actual need of the target user group, or if it's only of peripheral relevance in the long term. Decoupling the data producer from the consumer requires additional considerations and may increase the responsibility for the VIS researcher. Another risk is a premature finalization of data and task abstractions. Keeping the focus too narrow on the initial data without considering the broader problem space and ensuring extensibility from an engineering and design perspective. In our workshop paper, we reflect on two of our own projects that we now consider data-first design studies. Occupado, where we created a set of decision support tools that help stakeholders from different domains analyze building occupancy. And the Bike Sharing Atlas. We recorded station fill levels from hundreds of bike sharing networks and made the data accessible to different user groups. 
I will now use Occupado as a case study to explain why we think it's a data-first design study and I will go through all the stages of our proposed data-first framework. We collaborated with the sustainability startup Sensible Building Science, which was our data provider. The company collects Wi-Fi device signals without installing additional sensors and uses this data as a proxy for human occupancy. This is a very cost-efficient method to estimate occupancy in hundreds of rooms across many buildings. Our industry collaborator used the data to dynamically adapt heating, ventilation and air conditioning in building management systems. We thought, wow, this data is really interesting and we suspected that it could be useful for decision making and resource management if users can see the data visually. We acquired samples of this data that we refer to as location-based counts. These device counts for each zone or spatial region are stored every five minutes and we get a spatial time series over time. We don't record any trajectories or device identifiers, which leads to significant privacy advantages. In the illicit stage, our goal was to understand the tasks of potential stakeholders. We conducted a series of interviews with users from nine different domains and we tried to find out if they would benefit of exploring the data or not. We did a full task abstraction for all domains to find out if there is a match. We conjectured that this type of data can be actively used for certain tasks, but is not appropriate for others, for example when it's important to see movements or highly accurate headcounts. After a series of interviews, we assessed and prioritized a set of potential stakeholders, and we considered whether to incorporate secondary data to facilitate additional tasks. As a result, we identified stakeholders in five domains custodial services, space planning, building management, classroom management, and data quality control, because the data provider was also selected as the target user. Across all our stakeholders, we identified four high-level tasks. First, confirm assumptions or previous observations. A specific instance is, for example, do students always occupy a certain room in the evenings or on weekends? Live monitoring. Which rooms are empty or busy at the moment? Communicate space usage and justify decisions. For example, did the usage of an informal learning space improve after renovation? And in addition, use Occupado to verify if the recorded device counts are correct. What is the minimum size that could be reliably captured by using Wi-Fi access points? The cast stage is similar to the original framework, with the goal to identify roles. The promoter role is essential. It is important to reach out to stakeholders to present data and visualization opportunities. Another difference to most traditional design studies is that the data producer and the data consumer roles are held by different people and may require particular consideration. For example, in Occupado we had data for some buildings but a stakeholder wanted to analyze different regions on a university campus. In the design stage, we designed interfaces targeted to specific space-time slices. Our original assumption was that we would design different interfaces for different stakeholder domains, but instead we found a significant overlap between their tasks and the questions could be captured by looking at different space-time data granularities. The remaining stages implement, deploy, reflect and write were mostly aligned with the original DSM framework. We implemented and deployed multiple interfaces and our industry partner adopted Occupado as a frontend for the Wi-Fi data collection platform. Here you can see some screenshots of these interfaces. You can find more information about the Occupado project in our Eurovis paper that was published earlier this year. In our workshop paper, we contribute the first characterization of a data-first design study. We present the review of previous design studies a framework adaptation based on the original DSM and the discussion of opportunities and risks to provide practical guidance. Thank you.